this video I'm going to speak about what I find annoying about the martial arts industry. I'm also going to speak about what I observe um, for the, about the past year and a half. I've been putting effort to step into the professional area of the martial arts and teaching for pay opposed to just uh, teaching for fun and teaching to make a living and I'm going to express my, my, observe, my observations about what I notice about society, um, what I notice about what I have to share and what I deem as martial arts in its entirety. Um, true martial arts and the difficulties to to share that with America. Um, what I notice is that America loves to to label things and force things into little categories, force people to to choose this opposed to that. Like America is all about like. like forcing people to be in one little box opposed to allowing the person to grow to their full potential by by being open to everything so for example I'll use religion for an example like they won't allow a person to be Muslim and Christian they have to pick one or the other you're either Muslim or you're Christian you can't be both um, you can't even allow a person, they can't even allow a person to, to, to be Christian or Catholic. You gotta pick one or the other. You know, and when it comes to the martial arts, they force the schools to specialize. Otherwise, you pretty much will end up, in a way, almost going out of business. Because people are so used to this way of thinking that you can't really show them another way of thinking because they've been habitually living and thinking for this way since their birth and it's hard for them to see something outside of that so what I noticed in the martial arts is that the industry is not it's a difficult industry and it's, it's hard to profit off of it and make a living off, off of it because it's been so corrupted meaning that people either want combat sport or they want like in a way like a daycare center that has this facade or this image of martial arts when really it's just more of like a daycare center for people to maybe get a few little little exercise in, light exercise in, and maybe learn a little, a little like very little philosophy. But the real martial arts, the what I have to offer, there's no market for it. It's very few that are ready for the martial arts in its entirety. And I think. The society has trained people to be very cynical and skeptical about anything in regards to spirituality or religious development um, or just your, your, your inner wisdom, um, your inner wisdom in general. They've trained people to have this mentality that to stay close-minded with how they view the world. And because of that, there's very few things that can ever reach out to the person to get them to, to wake up in a way. And anytime you integrate the spirit in the martial arts or almost in anything in general, there's so much pressure from the society to to go against that so what I see is there's combat sport 
and then there's like daycare martial arts but the real martial arts most people don't even know what it is and because they don't don't even know what it is it's hard for them to 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 ask for or even know to even um to seek for it because they just don't know that it even exists so The way that I see martial arts sifu or sensei or a master is it's a lot of studying, a lot of training involved. It could take nearly, you know, decades of training. And it could take you 20, 30 years to get to the point of where you're like at a high level, where you're like a master or something. And it's like similar to the way I see it, like a PhD. Now, if you get a PhD in America, you should be able to make a good amount of money teaching. You know, if you if you get employed at a good college, I don't I'm just guessing. Maybe you might be able to make 150,000 a year or something, which is a good chunk of change, it's good money. Now, imagine if a high school teacher made 150,000 and then a PhD professor made 20,000. It's just, it's the, the math is all wrong. Why would you need to study more and study longer and train harder and be at a much higher level, but then you make like 20 times less? It just doesn't make sense. And that's how I see the martial arts, is that a sifu, a sensei, a master is extremely underpaid for what they have to offer to society. Like... People get in this train mentality, I don't know if it's because of karate or taekwondo that they train people to be this way, but they mass produce the martial arts and say they, they train like 30 kids at once and then they charge them all like $50 a month or something like that for unlimited training or whatever. And they just kind of, you know, just gather up a bunch of kids and just throw them in a, in a big room and call it martial arts while they just dilly and dally or whatever. And then they charge fifty dollars a month, and then now everybody, when they think about martial arts, they think that it should be fifty dollars a month or something for unlimited training, like it's a like it's a gym or something. And really, um, the the teach a real master deserves a lot more money than just fifty dollars a month from a student, especially if they come like unli unlimited times. Um, the whole industry is all destroyed. Um, I think that's one factor. Cause when you talk about a, a master, you're talking about the develop, you know, him helping you develop yourself physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So it's like a like a minister, a personal trainer, a psychologist, a combat coach, all in one. And to get all that training requires like thousands of hours of training, years and years of training. And they deserve a lot more money than what they get. Um, so what else is annoying is that you got all these people out there that are beginners. All these people that don't know much about anything. First, they're not even fit. Second. They can't even fight. They don't even know how to fight at all. They don't know how to defend themselves at all. Third, they're like spiritually poor. They're broke. Spiritually just lost. And then they expect to have like, like, like one of the best martial arts teachers in the world for like $50 a month or something like that. You know, they expect to have like, like, like say a Bruce Lee or Jet Li teach them when they're a beginner, they expect the, a Bruce Lee to Jet Li or whoever to teach them for $50 a month. They can't accept somebody that's been training for 5 years or 10 years or, or however long. They still want like the Grand Master to, to teach them for $50 a month. And that's just like ridiculous. You know, it's like people... It's like having somebody that can't even run down the block without like passing out and dying because he's so out of shape requesting for Arnold Schwarzenegger 
when he was Mr. Olympia to train them, and that's the only person that they want to train with, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And not only that, but they want to, they want Arnold Schwarzenegger to train him for five dollars an hour. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you got so many people out there that that try to they try to judge these teachers, these these um these martial arts instructors so critically, like oh you know he has to be in tip top shape. He has to be like completely humble and modest with his abilities. He has to be able to know everything about combat and be extremely proficient. He has to do this, this, and this. Let me see, you know, he has to have the, the best resume. He has to have all these trophies. He has to win all these fights. He has to have like the 50th degree black belt. He has to do all this stuff just so he could get $50 a month from this student. It's just completely ridiculous. You know, like, I just don't understand it at all. You know, and um, the industry is so destroyed that you lose hope in even sharing it because people aren't even valuing it the way that it needs to be valued. And then when you got a martial artist that does, or a teacher that does, a martial arts teacher that does charge what he deserves, then people start saying that he's greedy that, oh, you know, he's a, off for the money, and this martial arts teacher, he's just all about the money, all, that's all he cares about, and I don't want to learn from him. It's just silly and ridiculous. I don't understand. It's like, it's like all of a sudden, martial arts teachers are supposed to be seen as, like, they're expected to be, like, the, the person that teaches for free. They're expected to be like the priest that can't ask for your money but needs to the only thing that he's allowed to get is your donation um, but for him to even ask for some money for his uh, service it's seen as like a you know maybe a sin or something you know it's just like the whole industry is so destroyed that you're better off not even going into it you know for profit or to make a living. And then the people that that do want to work hard, that do want to train hard, they don't want to just train hard to train hard. They want to train hard for competition. They want to train hard to win trophies. They want to train hard to get money. So they're not even in it for the, the martial arts. They're in it for like to get money, to get fame, to get known. So those are the ones that are really that want to take it to the high level, but they're only doing it to fight in a competition. And those are the ones that will seek out those combat coaches. But to find somebody that's willing to train hard just just to train hard just because he enjoys it, it's a very difficult thing to do and to find. And when you do find that person, that person typically doesn't have money. And when that, you know, that person also may just be like, you know what, I don't need to go here to train, I'll just train at home. So, what you're left with is just people that may not be that talented. You know, they may not be that fit. And it's going to be hard to... have them train in the martial arts in the way that, it, that it's meant to be trained in and the people just don't want to train much. They may want to just, they may be good meditators, they may be good at things that don't require much effort. You know, you might have a lot of people that like to, to speak about the theory behind the martial arts. A lot of like martial arts intellectuals. But to have the people to actually get into it, train, get to a high level, and also to ask for them not to compete on top of that, that's a very difficult thing to request out of these people. A lot of them will just, they, they just won't even do it. So, I see that. And what I also see is people like the personal trainers, the fitness trainers, 
that work at these commercial gyms, they make, they can make very good money for what they do. And that's a lot easier than being a martial arts master. It requires a lot less training and studying. And they make, the industry is not corrupted as how the martial art industry is. They get paid what they deserve. You know, um, you have personal trainers out there that would be charging $80 an hour. You know, and these martial arts teachers, a lot of them are working for like probably under $5 an hour. And these martial arts masters have a lot more experience in training than these personal trainers. So you see how it's flip flopped and that's what I'm talking about when I bring that example up about the PhD professor compared to like the high school teacher. The high school teacher is like the personal trainer. The personal trainer is not supposed to get paid less than, or not supposed to get paid more than the PhD professors. That's not supposed to be like that. PhD professor is supposed to make a lot more money than the personal trainer. So the personal trainer is charging eighty dollars an hour. A martial arts master should be charging like two hundred dollars an hour and up. And you do have some of these competition coaches that do charge that much. I've seen on a website, like, you know, a jiu-jitsu guy charging like $250 an hour. And he's won like this, this, and this competition and whatever. But when you have people that are willing to pay that much money for a coach or a trainer, they're doing it. They're typically going to be doing it for comp competitive reasons. They're going to be doing it to, 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 um, to have the extra edge so they can make more money in the ring or wherever. So if you want to make that much money, you can't be a, a master of seafood. you got to be like a combat coach. And then on top of that, you're going to have to prove yourself in the competition field in order to have the people hire you over the next guy. So I see how it is and I'm sick of having to feel that I have to prove myself to people in order to get students or whatever. It's just the stupidest thing in the world for me. It's like I gotta prove myself to you so that you can give me fifty dollars a month. Are you kidding me? You know it's like what I gotta, what I gotta do? I gotta beat up a bunch of people for you to see, so that, so that I can get fifty dollars a month out of you. You know, it's like these people, if they don't see that a person is capable, or they're just too like hard-headed, they got so much of a huge ego that they can't accept somebody as a teacher. Then to me, it's just pointless. What's there to prove? You know, I mean. What I like about fitness is it's just pure and simple. Like, I'm fit, I know how, how to be fit, I know how to train people to be fit, look at what I can do, and I can help you get there. I'm a living example of it. And then you got people who are may come in very unfit, very overweight, and they just accept you as a trainer right there. They don't need you to like beat anybody up to prove that you're gonna that you can train them to get them to where they need to be but when it comes to the martial arts you got people that are completely out of shape they don't know anything about self-defense or fighting they don't know anything about martial arts at all and then they expect you to prove yourself you know like like they're just so like like they're like like um they they you know oh you've only been training for five years you know and then the, you know they'll say you know they'll be like they expect you to have like forty years of experience or something it's like you know these people are so hard headed so egoistic or whatever I mean I understand if you're paying somebody two hundred fifty dollars five hundred dollars an hour then yeah. The person should probably have to go through a you know have to go through a lot to prove to to you that they're capable of of teaching you. 
But if you got somebody, you're only giving them fifty dollars a month or something, and you expect them to meet all these requirements out of you, you know, in, in order to, to to gain your your respect as a teacher, you know, you can forget about it. You know, the, the whole thing is all flipped. You know, and um, I see that a lot of times these people, they go in these competitions so that they can prove to themselves, prove that they're capable, prove that they're capable of teaching or whatever, so that they can get students. You know, it's just, um, people are always like comparing this to that to this, well really, what what matters is where are you at? Like they'll be like, oh, you know, this teacher's better than that teacher because this teacher beat that teacher up or whatever. Well, the fact of the matter is, probably both of those teachers could teach you something because you're so far behind to begin with. It's like somebody that doesn't know how to swim and then they're requesting for Michael Phelps, the Olympic winner of swimming, to teach them for like 50 bucks a month or for free. They won't accept the person who just, who took three months of swimming classes and knows how to swim now. They won't accept that person. They only want to accept the best swimmer in the world to teach them for 50 bucks a month or something like that. Are you kidding me? You know, it's like a lot of these people are so far behind that you're, you're in no position to put such heavy criticism onto people who are trying to help you, you know, because the um, majority of the people out there in this world, over 90% of the people out there in this world are not even ready for the martial arts. They, they don't even, they're not even fit yet. The way that I teach, they need to get fit first and most people aren't even fit. So for them to even act like, you know, um, they need the best martial arts teacher in the world to prove to them that they're that they're um, a worthy teacher or whatever. They're completely ridiculous. They need to get checked. Okay, um, so I'm disappointed with the martial arts industry completely in America. I believe that. You are much better off going into the field of fitness and keeping the martial arts within yourself and maybe the few people that are ready for it, which is very few. Um, maybe out of a hundred, you might have one, okay? But most people, you know, the whole thing, if you want to make money, you want to make a living, I, I strongly suggest to go into the field of fitness. This whole martial art thing in America is all destroyed. You got either a daycare center where you just house a bunch of kids and then just get a head count of how much money you make based on your 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 uh, martial daycare center. You either choose that route or you choose the combat sport where you're training a bunch of bullies to be stronger bullies and you're profiting off the bullies. And then you're profiting off of other people's misery and then you're promoting more anger, aggression, and hatred, and violence. So you either have daycare, like the Kung Fu Panda thing, or you have Karate Kid Kung Fu Panda, or you have like combat sport, which is like violent. The real martial arts, which is in between, is like non-existent in America. People don't even know what it is. They don't even know what it is. They don't even know, they won't even want to pay for it because they don't even know what what's the benefit to it. So they have no idea what martial arts is. They know combat sport and they know like martial daycare. And if you're not willing to go to either one, then you might as well go into a different field of making money. I chose the field of fitness training, just train people to get fit. Um, you may just make your money doing something else. You know, like delivering mail or being a UPS driver or working at a restaurant or working security or working law enforcement or doing something to make the money so you can continue on with your training but the real martial arts there is no market for it at all 
you will go out of business very quickly if that's all you want to teach. I'm not willing to do the combat sport thing. I'm completely against that. The martial daycare thing, I mean, I'd just rather do the fitness, not the daycare center. So, that's what I've observed, and that's what's real. That's what's out there. And um, it's a shame. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep expressing the martial arts the way that I believe it should be expressed through YouTube, through the internet, through my writings. And the people that do appreciate it, a lot of times they may not live where I live. They live in another part of the world and then we'll connect through the internet. And then um, we'll represent martial arts within ourselves, within our own expression. And we'll be the living example of it. But to make a living off of it, it's a very difficult thing to do. But what I can see happening is for me to keep pumping out these YouTube videos and keep having YouTube and Google pay me for making these videos. And then, and then potentially... I may be able to make a living off of that alone. And then that can be the way of sharing the real martial arts through the internet. Um, because then you're gaining the audience from the world opposed to just your local area. Now you got people from Africa, from China, from Indonesia, from Mexico, from Canada, from all these different countries and all these different states. You know, if you could find, say, a thousand people that are really hardcore about the real martial arts and you can find those thousand people scattered around the world then you can make a living potentially you know teaching the martial arts the way that it needs to be the, the real way that it should be taught but to depend on your local area which may just have a few hundred people or a few thousand people out of ten thousand people you'll be lucky to even find 25 people that are really serious about learning the martial arts the way that it, the real way okay so that's what I see that's my feedback about this martial arts um, industry in America